Farmy, this is Jaden's videos, and I'm back with another Halloween 2020 animatronic review. And this one is on a Home Depot 2020 animatronic. This is the Grave Digger, made by Seasonal Visions. This is definitely one of my favorite Halloween props of 2020, and is for sure my favorite Home Depot one for 2020. As I love the Haunted Mansion, and he gives off such Haunted Mansion vibes, and so I wanted him right away when I saw him. He is the best Gravedigger prop we've ever seen, in my opinion, and I love him so much. So, without further ado, let's get right into it. This guy retails for $179, and I think he is 100% worth that, but I'll get into that a little bit later on. For now, let's talk about his detail. First off, we're going to start at the head, of course. He's got this nice top hat here. He definitely has a Wild West type Gravedigger appearance to him, which I really like. He's got this really nice top hat here, of course, but you go down to his face, it looks great. Now, I know a lot of them have face deformities. Luckily, mine is not that bad. There's a little bit of deformity in the face, but it's not one of the worst I've seen. Now, one thing that is an issue with this guy is that his mouth movement is a little too much. Um, it moves a little too much because of the thin material that SVI used on this. Now what I did to solve that issue on mine is all you have to do really, and I noticed it's an issue on most people's because they just leave the neck hanging out and so it flaps around, which doesn't look good to begin with, but you just tuck it into the shirt here and then the neck doesn't flap around and the mouth movement is not too much. It's just a good amount. But other than that, his face looks really cool. I love the... It's kind of weird that it's kind of greenish because he's supposed to be human. He's not a zombie or anything. But I think it adds to him. It looks cool. He's got some nice detail on there, rotted away teeth. I love the, like, wrinkles and lines on his face. I love how skinny and malnourished he looks. He looks really cool. His He has green eyes there, which are going to light up yellow. And he's just got a really cool face. He's got very scraggly long white hair which I think adds to him. He's just a really creepy looking prop overall. The outfit on this guy is definitely one of the best outfits on a prop this year I think. Besides Krampus. Krampus needs to get the best outfit for sure but this guy's got a really nice one. It's definitely very 1800s with the little uh, I think it's called a jabbit is I think how they pronounce it. I'm not sure how you jabot, jabbit, I don't know how you pronounce it but this is what they wear. It's kind of like a handkerchief type thing that they'd wear back then. It's the little ruffles on the shirts. I've always loved those. I wish those were still a thing. <laughs> well, I mean, they are, but they're not socially acceptable to wear, but I'll wear them anyways when I get my hands on one. Um, the, I love these things. I think they make old-fashioned suits look really nice, and it's very gothic looking. I love that they added to him, it to him. It definitely shows that he's from the 1800s. Definitely Wild West-like, like I mentioned. I love his coat he's got on it looks really nice and I love this down here this is one of the best parts about the clothes in my opinion is this red velvet vest usually we'd see the the uh, if a prop would have a vest it would have this type of material but this is actually red velvet it's really nice it looks great I really like it of course up there you've got the IR sensor nice and disguised as a button on the shirt which I really like here you've got the hands which look like they may be vinyl or latex or rubber but they're actually a hard plastic but they got some good detail on there still so it doesn't really matter uh, same skin tone as his face the kind of greenish look and you can see his veins popping out which I really like it looks cool this hand still looks cool detail wise but I don't like the big hole in it I I know he needs to hold the lantern but I don't think the hole needed to be that big it could definitely have been a lot more closed up that way it looks more realistic but the hole is very very wide and very very noticeable which is one issue I have but other than that it's a nice looking uh, sculpted hand. His lantern is just a standard uh, looking lantern it's got some detailing and stuff on it but it's nothing too special but it doesn't look bad at all so I'm not saying it looks bad it's just a standard lantern though but it does flicker which I think adds a cool effect. One of the coolest things about him is his shovel of course because what is a grave digger without the shovel it's got some good detail on it a lot of rusted type detail on both parts of the shovel, the top and the bottom, and the handle. It looks great. It velcros right there, but you don't need to have it velcroed. It's still going to stay on because he holds it in his hand. But to get it in the best position where it's like hanging over his shoulder, it's best to velcro it on. He's just got plain black pants here. There's not detailing on them or anything, but that doesn't really matter. Here's his coat, which hangs down really long, which I really like. I love 
uh, long hanging down coats. I've always really loved them. They're one of my favorite types of apparel and clothing are coats or anything that you wear over your clothes that like hangs down far and kind of blows behind you in the wind. I just think it looks really cool. Um, hence the reason I wear flannels. But that's the pants and the coat a little bit. But let me talk about these shoes. Wow, these are great shoes. Um, they are plastic, but they look fantastic. Look at these. They definitely look realistic, which is good. They're not the very thin plastic. It's a very hard plastic, which is great. It's not the thin plastic that SVI uses for their clown shoes, which is good because I really do not like those shoes, and I want them to stop using them. These shoes are very hard plastic, very durable. They're not really shoes, though. They're boots, which I love boots. So there you go, Grave Digger. I love your fashion style. So overall, this guy looks fantastic, but along with the looks, may I talk about his height? If you've seen him in the store, you might think he's pretty big, but in the store, to me personally, he just looked average sized, the way that they kind of had him pushed back. You couldn't really tell his full height. You get him home, he is one of the biggest props of the year. Wow. Look at him next to Krampus. Now, Krampus is still way bigger, for sure, the width and everything. But the Gravedigger is so tall, it shocked me. I didn't expect it at all. Now, with that out of the way, the guy, this guy's animation is great, and for the price, it's really worth it. $180 for this, and you get, you've got mouth movement, you've got head side-to-side -side turning, you've got body side-to-side -side turning, and he lifts his lantern up and down. That is a lot of animation for $180, and I really love the lifting of the lantern up and down. I think it looks great on him. It's definitely a fantastic animation, and I like it a lot. It's very eerie. His audio is great. I don't know who the voice actor on this one is. I would say Mike Reynolds, but it is not Mike Reynolds, I don't think. I am going to take a shot in the dark, but I think this is correct. I believe this is done by Doug Boyd, who is the same voice actor who does Wacky Mole Clown, if you are not familiar. He also does a lot of things for Target. He does a lot of other things for Home Depot, like the Headless Horseman, the Motorcycle Riding Reaper. A little side thing about Doug Boyd, he doesn't only voice act Halloween stuff, but you might have heard his voice in a game called Bioshock. That is right, Doug Boyd has a voice stuff, a character in Bioshock. I don't really remember what character, but it's on his list of the credits that he has. He has done something for Bioshock. He's done other video games and such. I'm not, I don't really remember them all, but Doug is definitely one of the best voice actors for Halloween props, for sure, because he is very, very skilled in his craft, and you can not tell, it's very hard to tell which prop he voices. The only way I can tell which ones he voiced are, I'm like, okay, this isn't Mike, so who is it? Oh, it's probably Doug. <laughs> but that's the only way I can tell is because if it's not Mike, it must be Doug. That's literally the only way I can tell, which is why I'm saying I'm taking a shot in the dark, though, because he's such a great voice actor that I, I can't even tell. It's so hard to even tell if it's him or not like I believe it is but it's so hard to tell if it is or not I'm pretty positive someone at SVI is going to tell me who it is in the comments or is going to private message me about it or maybe Doug himself I don't know but we, we will find out but definitely go check out Doug Boyd's other stuff that he's done because he has not only done Halloween props so I'm sure he would greatly appreciate if you check out the other stuff he's done but enough with my little tangent about the voice actor and back to the prop itself so this guy is super cool. His audio is great. Besides the amazing voice acting by presumably Doug Boyd, he has awesome audio with like screaming in the background, wind howling, thunder cracking, just really creepy cemetery type sound effects. And he's he's definitely right up my alley. He's a very gothic prop. And if you know me, my two biggest things uh, for Halloween would be gothic and traditional. So this guy is right up my alley. This place is filled with the bodies of those I buried over the years. Why, some were even dead when I buried them. Others were the undead, and I had to bury them just to keep them quiet. They say this place is haunted. Oh, I've seen the spirits of the dead walk in and floating above the ground, but that's not my job. No, oh, sir, I put the bodies under the ground. 
Most of the time when I bury a body, they stay buried. But every now and then, one pops up and grabs you. You best run along before another one of them gets antsy. A gypsy woman said I'd be burying four bodies tonight. I've buried three bodies so far. I wonder. I'll get the hole dug in and then we'll just see who gets to lay in it. <laughs> be careful where you tread. Some buried folks don't stay buried and are likely to grab you around the ankle and pull you down with them. <laughs> now, I don't have to dig a grave for everybody buried here. I've heard that this place is a cursed patch of land. On Halloween night, the buried bodies will rise back up from the ground and reclaim the souls of others. I doubt that's true, but I'm gonna keep this shovel handy just in so there you have it. I love his phrases. They are so well written. Honestly, they're probably my favorite phrases of any prop this year. They're so well written, so well done, and just so well executed by Doug, presumably. But his phrases are so fantastic. They're so eerie, and I love how he doesn't laugh that much. I adore evil laughs. I do them all the time in my movies and such. But I think it depends on the character that should have an evil laugh. The Butcher... He's some crazy serial killer guy. He should have an evil laugh. Little Daisy and the Maestro should have an evil laugh. But characters like this, like a grave digger, I'm glad that he doesn't laugh much. And when he does, it's very subtle. Because he's not really supposed to be some evil guy. He's not supposed to be some bad guy. He's just supposed to be some creepy old grave digger. And so when he doesn't laugh, it just makes him sound so much more serious. It makes his tone a lot darker. And it makes his phrases a lot more dreary and foreboding. I really like when props like this, like I said, some props should laugh. Like the butcher, he would not be the same if he didn't have an evil laugh. Little Daisy and the Maestro would not be the same if he didn't have an evil laugh. But some props... I feel like it depends on the phrase and it depends on the character itself. A character like this, I feel like a lot of times we do get too many characters that laugh when they shouldn't. Like Harvester of Souls, I feel like he would have been a lot more foreboding and intimidating if he didn't laugh when he lowered the girl. And he just kind of lowered her with like the wispy sounds in the background. I th feel like it would have been more foreboding and intimidating. It depends on the character. This guy, I'm so glad that they didn't give him very many evil laughs and that the evil laughs they gave him were very subtle because it fits his character so well and it makes him so much more dreary. And it's one of the reasons I love him so much is because it just adds so much more of a dreary and macabre atmosphere to his phrases, his audio, and just everything about this guy in general. I cannot speak highly enough of this prop. I I love it. It's definitely one of my favorites of the year. Dare I say, it's made it into my top five. It, it's so good. I I love it so much. I, I really do. It's definitely one of the best props of the year. I think the best grave digger we've ever seen. And definitely the best Home Depot prop of the year, hands down. Now, it's not the best one of the year... Um, for sure. I'm not even sure if he's made it into my top five yet, because I love a lot of the spirit ones this year. But he's definitely in my top ten of the year out of all stores and all props. He's fantastic, and I cannot recommend him enough. And for $180, he is 100% worth it. So I'm going to give this guy a full 10 out of 10. He is so worth your money if you're into him. He's so cool, and I really, really recommend this guy. I cannot recommend him enough. And to add on to that, Spirit, uh, not Spirit Halloween, Home Depot does their sales before Halloween. That's right. Um, I, that's one thing I wish Spirit Halloween would do. I wish Spirit wouldn't do their sales after Halloween. I wish they would do it like the day before Halloween at least, so you can get stuff in time for Halloween for a cheap price. But Home Depot does their sales about a week or two before Halloween, and they're big sales. I mean big. I don't know the exact percentage, but they usually take off a lot of money. So if you want this guy, his price is already cheap, but if you get him on sale when Home Depot does their sale next month, uh, a couple weeks before Halloween, you can get him on time for Halloween itself, and you're going to be getting him for probably around $110 is what I'm going to guess based on how their sales usually go, which is a steal for a prop like this. I really hope you all enjoy fantastic work, SVI and Home Depot with this one. Definitely one of the best props of the year. Keep howling at the moon, my werewolves.